Invictus Gaming Laptop. A RAM upgrade. Shit, I gotta turn it on. Those usually go a lot smoother. <coughs> this video is a step-by-step -step process of how to install a bigger SSD into this computer without having to erase anything or reinstall Windows. This is the RTX 3050 model. I guess now that the 5090s exist, this is a super outdated laptop, but that just means this is gonna get even more affordable and it can still play AAA games. You just have to crank down the graphics a little bit. Fine by me if it means I can play Anno 1800 in airports or hotels. I travel a lot for work. There's still smoke in the air. Anyway, I have run this thing out of space. New game files are huge. Here's what you have to do to get a new drive, clone it, and get it into this computer. I'm doing this with a two terabyte NVMe drive from Orico. Unfortunately, this computer only comes with one M.2 slot. That's what your SSD plugs into. So you're not gonna be able to just put in the new drive and copy everything over from the old drive. You're gonna need to clone your existing one. So the first thing, you're gonna need a way to mount the new drive externally. And the easiest way to do that is with an external USB to M.2 enclosure. I got this dual M.2 NVMe enclosure thinking I would put both the old drive and the new drive in it and then clone them from a, a second computer, which you absolutely can do. But not everyone has a second computer and I found this free software called Macrium Reflect that lets you clone your system drive even when you're booted from it on your laptop. So you could get away with just a single M.2 enclosure. I'm gonna keep this one because I'm gonna end up putting two matching NVMe drives in here and using this as another backup. But when you get one of these, make sure it's an NVMe enclosure and not just an M.2 SATA only enclosure. Those are two different things, same shape for the plug of the drive. With this enclosure, all you have to do is push this little slidey button over and then you can just push out the tray that holds the SSD. You don't even need any tools. And this tray is actually the thing that holds the drive and has the plug in it. So you don't even need the enclosure necessarily, especially since I'm just gonna copy things off this computer and be done with it really quick. So you can just plug this tray right into the side of the computer with the USB-C cable. Also, this thing came with extra stuff. This thing comes with little thermal pads and little aluminum heat spreaders. When you're gonna permanently mount a drive into here, you'll stick a thermal pad onto the top of your SSD, slap a heat spreader on top of that, that'll make the heat that comes off this drive go spread onto here and that'll spread onto this aluminum body. That's why everything's made out of aluminum. Aluminum dissipates heat really well. But again, I'm gonna copy for like 20 minutes. Super easy, only fits one way, you'll see the little teeth line up with the little plug and this presses down and normally on an M.2 there'll be a screw right there but this uses these weird little rubbery plugs. I'm gonna have to get some close-up b-roll of this afterwards but you literally just push that on there and you just kind of work it till it pokes through the hole. All right. And it holds itself in there. This cable actually comes built in with a little USB-A attachment in case your computer does not have USB-C, but the Victus does have USB-C, so that's fine. Plug that in there, plug this in here. And since it's a brand new drive, it'll come unformatted, so it won't show up on your computer, but that doesn't matter. Open Macrium Reflect, and you're gonna see both drives. The top one with a bunch of stuff on it is your current drive in your computer. It's actually split into four different partitions to do Windows stuff. Click on the system, and then just below that, click Clone This Drive. Then a new window will pop up, and you'll choose select disk to clone to, where you should only have one option unless you have other external drives plugged into your computer, in which case you should eject those so you don't accidentally erase them and clone your drive to them. But pick the new drive, which in my case is two terabyte. It says 1.86 terabytes because the other partitions are taking up the rest of that space doing system stuff. Then under destination, you're gonna click copy partitions. And this is important, you'll have two options, but since we're putting a bigger drive in place of where there was a smaller drive, you wanna choose shrink or extend to fill target disk. Otherwise it would just make a 500 gigabyte partition on your two terabyte drive and you wouldn't be able to use the rest. You'll notice now that these three partitions are the same as the original drive, but the C drive goes from 475 gigabytes to 1.86 terabytes. That's the space I'm gonna fill up with Red Dead Redemption 2 and the Microsoft Flight simulator packs that are like half a terabyte. Thank you very much. At this point, you can just hit finish. It's gonna talk about BitLocker not being enabled. That's an encryption thing that prevents people from like physically stealing a drive out of a computer and then just copying it. Just hit okay, agree to everything, give it a name, and it'll start copying over. And actually, both of these drives are pretty fast. I did a Blackmagic disk speed test before I started this process, and the drive that came with this computer reads and writes at about three gigabytes per second. And this Orico drive can go even a little faster, up to five gigabytes per second. So copying over all that data really doesn't take that long. The whole cloning process for me took a little more than 17 minutes. And my drive was like 90% full. So that's done. Now to put this drive into this computer. Eject this from your computer. Take out this little rubber thing. That's actually in there pretty good. And pull the drive out. All you really need is a tiny screwdriver. 
This is a big kit from iFixit that has a whole bunch of tiny screwdrivers. Also a bunch of metal and plastic things to slide in between case parts and pry stuff open. I think for this, you're gonna want a Phillips number one. Unplug. Make sure your computer's off and flip it over. There are seven screws around the bottom plate here. Oh, it's not a number one, it's smaller. Switch to my old man glasses, my zoom in glasses. It's a number double zero. First, take off these seven screws. Next, if you haven't opened this before, like if you haven't gotten in here to get the RAM or anything like that, it might be a little challenging to pop the bottom off first, the first time. I had luck starting over by the ethernet port, just get something to kind of pry in there and get it started. It's not gonna be as easy as this because I've already opened this computer to get at my RAM, but you're just gonna basically get some sort of plastic Work your way around the outside. You're gonna pop off the little clampy fingers that are in there and take off this bottom case. To be extra super safe, the first thing you should do in here is disconnect the battery from the board. And that is this colorful set of cables here. It is this colorful set of cables here. That should just be a light tug and it comes off. That way there's just no power in the board. And really, this is actually so simple because this is your SSD and it's just right out there in the open. You can just take that same screwdriver, take this one screw that holds this in, that'll flip up, you can just pluck that out. Your new SSD will just fit right there in the same spot. Bam, upgraded. And just make your case go back on. Oh, don't forget to reconnect your battery. Otherwise, you know, your computer won't work. And since we're in here and I made another video, I'll link to it over here. Upgrading your RAM is just as easy. It's these two sticks here. Your computer probably just came with one. It may have come with a pair. Who knows? There's a bunch of different configurations. Just make sure you look at the thing and you kind of compare Let me pull these out. These computers either come with DDR4 or DDR5 RAM. And an easy way to tell the difference is just where this notch is. So when you're searching Amazon for like a new sticker RAM, just make sure that notch lines up with the same thing. I'm just gonna say DDR4 laptop RAM. It might just say right on it. If it has a sticker, this one has a sticker, it just says DDR4 right on it. So you might be able to see what you got like that. But we're just gonna put this bottom Put all these screws back in and fire it up and it should be like nothing ever happened. Except the drive is way bigger. That's it. That's done. Let's turn this on and see what happened. Never mind the melty screen from my botched intro. CMOS checksum is invalid. Reset to default configuration computer will restart afterwards. Please check the BIOS. Okay. So it had a little bit of a hiccup, but that seems to have worked itself out. It still says my name. And voila, extra bonus, this drive should be a little bit faster. So this computer should actually be a little snappier, not just have more storage. Look at that, 1.45 terabytes free. I'm gonna wait for the system to finish doing system stuff and then I'm gonna do a disk test. Oh, never mind, something's... Something's definitely wrong. Yeah, this should at least be reading and writing as fast as the other drive, which was 3,000 megabytes per second, but it could be up to 5,000. Uh, something's wrong. I gotta stop this. I'm gonna do some system updates. Well, that was weird. When I first started this back up, I ran a disk speed test for a Blackmagic disk speed test, and it was going really slow, like 900 megabytes per second. The speed of the drive is printed right on the box, so I know it can go up to 5,000 megabytes per second, five gigabytes per second. Is that gigabytes or gigabits? Gigabytes per second. And I had already tested the drive that I took out of there, which came in around three gigabytes per second. So I know it's NVMe, I know it's not just a SATA SSD. All I did to fix this was to go into Windows Update and do a bunch of updates. It turns out I even had a BIOS update. I haven't updated this for a really long time and poof, now it fixed it. Now we're at 3,700 megabytes per second, 3,600 megabytes per second. Evidently, something in one of those updates had something to do with this particular SSD. So, 45 minutes of updating and restarting later, 
love Windows. Here we are, around 3,500 megabytes per second. So a little bit faster than I had before. Now my laptop's a little speedier than it was before. It's got way more space than it had before. And I've got this extra NVMe SSD. Since I already bought this external dock thing to do the copying, I think I'm just gonna plug this in here and I've got a half a terabyte super speedy thumb drive in case I ever have to move monstrous files between computers. That's the end. The Victus Gaming Laptop. The Victus melted screen.